Uh, this is this is tutorial one of dealing with stencil. Uh, today I'm just going to show you a bit about how the actual uh, stencil kit works and how you can find things within stencil itself. And this is obviously a Mac version of stencil. However, the Mac and the Windows version of stencils tend to be uh, quite similar <coughs> in makeup. Uh, what we have presented here is probably a bit more busier than some of you will be presented with because obviously I've built a few games and have a few other games from people to mark on my main screen but this is essentially the main screen. Um, we have a menu bar up the top here which allows us to create new, save our game, import, uh, there are settings, Stencil Forge. Now all of these are greyed out currently. Stencil Forge will never be activated within school however if you sign up with an account outside of school and use stencil at home you'll be able to actually go there and gain uh, different types of assets like uh, character animation, scenes, different types of kits, all those sorts of things. So these are all great out until we actually get a game. Over here we've got a link that takes us to Stencilpedia which is essentially your help reference for anything that you need to know. Um, need help? Never pressed it, don't know obviously not that useful to me. Now over here we've got uh, a flash play player or the browser so you can decide whether you want to test things in the player which just brings up a little uh, uh, a little window by itself or the browser which uh, will pop it into your favorite internet browser so you can see how it works. Um, if you were developing for real world applications and you were developing for the web it would be important that you would choose the browser and test all of the browsers that you possibly can to make sure your game runs alright. Test game and publish are obviously things that we need to do once we've finished our games or while we're developing them. Now we don't have a game selected yet. Now you can see down here we have on the left hand side this is uh, a selection area. We've got my projects, so we've got some games and we also have a kit view. Now the first view was the, the games view. The kit view itself shows us different types of kits that we can build games from. I've got a few more in there that are going to become basic. We can download games, kits, etc. And that requires a connection to Stencil Forge, so not quite working. But you can see once I clicked on it, it tried to go to Stencil Forge immediately. Um, a few other links what's new, what's going on on Facebook, Twitter, our blog forum. So just a bit more information. Now we'll get into a game. I'll choose. Uh, we've got to go to our games. Have a look at this one that I developed in class. Now once you get into a particular style game like we have here, you can see that these become available now. So I can create a new actor type, background, font, scene, behaviour, sound, tile set, resource packs, all these things will make sense later on. Um, but essentially because it's selected on scene, when we click create new, it goes immediately for the create a new scene version. This is called your dashboard, okay, and it provides you essentially all that you need to do some work. So down the side gives us our resource types. We have actor types, okay. In this case we have mambo, a monkey, a pineapple and some lime. Um, and if we wanted to select one, double click it will open them up and provide them with a tab up in the top corner here and take you immediately to it. Now what we have here is a section of animations um, and across the top here you'll find tabs with different properties etc. So we've got appearance, we've got behaviours, we've got events, we've got collisions, we've got physics, we've got properties. Now all of those will be sort of covered in a later uh, tutorial. Okay. Closing them is obviously just clicking the little cross, shuts down the, the tab. You can have as many as you want open, but I like to keep mine quite tidy. Have a background, um, I've created a font, there's, some, so there's a scene in this particular game, got my sounds already imported, and a tile set. Now I don't actually, I haven't used the tile set at all in this game, this just came with the kit. I took the run and jump kit as a basis for this. Now we also have down the bottom here some actor behaviours. Okay, now these are the behaviours that are currently attached to actors. I've created quite a few of them. Um, shoot destruction, hit by fruit, on screen, screen restrict, throw fruit, they're all of my own. 
Um, these ones here came packaged with the uh, application itself. We'll talk extensively about behaviours in the next few tutorials. Uh, scene behaviours, I've created both of these. The mouse miss is something that I'm working on and doesn't work. So if I want to get rid of a behaviour, click on the cross, click on remove and it's gone. Okay, um, show score as a behaviour I want. If I wanted to have a look at the behaviour, double click on it, again it opens it up. What you see here is the generic programming screen for uh, Stencil, um, and this is the style and how we program generally. Uh, this is a simplified version of actual code. Now you can see up here we've got three versions. Main, which is where we actually grab stuff, drag it into here, use what we've dragged, uh, and provide game logic that pro um, powers our game. Preview code actually gives us the physical code of the game, which is in a C format, um, probably C++. Uh, C++. Um, and this is what it actually looks like to the computer before it compiles it. It compiles a word where the computer actually takes your physical code and turns it into the game itself. It also gives a bit of properties, gives you show score, description that I neglected to put in, so we can put that in here, show score to the main screen. Descriptions always help other people when they're using your code to utilize it or even get an idea of what they're doing for when I mark it. I'll go back to main and we can have a play there now. Saves anything once you close it off. And there's code. Now there's no logic uh, if I wanted to code something direct in and we won't be dealing with anything in this regards. Okay, the last thing that I want to show you, like I mean you can click this save game and it'll save everything that you've touched on the way if you haven't saved it yourself. Um, you can import stuff like uh, various bits and pieces, you can import music, photos, movies, etc. in. Brings up a pretty standard import screen. But this is the most important thing that we need to have a look at. We need to have a look at our settings. Now these settings apply to the game as a whole. You can see that we have um, some details. It tells us the name of the game up here in the settings. I haven't given a description to it because this is something that I've been doing off the cuff. It tells us what size it's going to be when in a web browser. Um, and the game logo which is currently set as Mambo but we can select any image so if you create your own logos this is the place to come. Uh, our web details tells us some third party stuff all of this sort of thing we're not really going to worry about. Our loader again not really going to worry about. Now attributes we will be dealing with we'll specifically deal with this when we have a look at behaviors closely but this covers your use of game attributes and you can see here I have a game attribute called score so its name is score its category is default okay I could apply a new category to it its type is a number and it has an initial value of zero so obviously the score is something that builds it up once um, I start shooting and destroying things etc Controls. Now, whenever you want to implement your controls or place what controls you want in the game, okay, uh, this is where you come to put it in. Um, now, you can see it gives us the keys. This is up, this is down. These are the names that we apply to it. So once we start using them in game, those names become meaningful to us. Jump, enter, fire, one, Z, key, etc. And groups. Now we can see that you have standard groups of players, tiles, doodads, actors and regions. Now they are standard because they're the ones with the locks next to them. They come as part of stencil. The two that I've created for this game are enemies and fruit. Okay, so our enemies don't have a description at all, but you can see fruit is ammunition in the monkey destruction game. So once we've got it all together, you've got a game ready to go, you can test that game from the dashboard. It will hopefully go through, generate a shockwave version of the game or a flash version of the game, which will come up in our main screen. And once we get there, and you'll be able to test your game from there. 